I'd like to make an observation. So I'm turning in my Bible here to a passage I'm going to read. Most people are familiar with. The observation is that uh, lost people have to work hard all of their life to go to hell. What? Well, you know, I, one of the famous statements is, uh, why would a loving God send lost people to hell? Right? Um, the fact of the matter is, God doesn't send people to hell. Okay? Let me just show you another verse here really quickly. Matthew chapter 25. You know, if God's so loving, why would He create such a terrible place? Matthew 25, verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. It wasn't created for you, if you're lost. All right? Understand that. I remember being out on the street the one time, we were out witnessing and things, and we ran into this educated guy, and I was just newly saved at that point. And he said, Can you show me one verse of Scripture where Jesus in his own words, is condemning somebody to hell. And I just kind of stood there like, um, uh, you know, I mean, it, you know, you get into a situation like that, you're nervous, there's a lot of sound around and stuff. And I could not think of the verse. Well, there's one right there. Matthew 25, verse 41. Jesus saying there, Depart from me, ye cursed, and everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So yes, Jesus does condemn people to hell. All right. But let's talk about a, a verse that most people are aware of. John chapter 3, I think this is going to illustrate my point very well. Verse 16, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Well, isn't that nice? Then everybody's going to be saved. No. You'd think that such a positive thing God sending His Son to die and say, "Just come on, you you know, believe here and and you go to heaven," you know. Easy. But that's not the case. Verse eighteen: He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. Look at this. That light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Hmm. You know, I wanted to make this observation, because I've seen this thing so many times. Uh, for years and years and years now, I have uh, put, you know, magnets, bumper stickers and things on my vehicles, uh, just with Scripture. I don't have anything on there, you know, uh, some kind of thing of faggots will burn or something like that. I don't waste time with stuff like that. You know, God hates fags like the Westboro Catholic controlled opposition thing had. That's nonsense. That stuff is just ridiculous, wicked, you know, whatever. I just put scripture. And the one I currently have on the back is, The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Right? It's in Psalms. And I just got it there. It's just, you know, just scripture. The world's best-selling book of all time and uh i can't tell you how many times i've been driving down the road and i'll you know all of a sudden somebody comes up behind me you know or whatever else and getting in traffic or things you know and and i'm stopped at a light and they come up behind me and light changes and and uh all of a sudden they're staying way back and then a passing zone comes up and they'll go flying out around me you know and, and they'll take off and they're going up and they're passing other people and stuff in no passing zones and they're just they're running from something. You see, I'm convinced, after seeing this thing for years and years and years and years and years, I'm convinced that to go to hell, if somebody wants to go to hell, and I do mean that, if they want to go to hell, they have to fight God their whole life. Why? Because they don't want to come to light because their deeds are evil. You know, the first thing that will happen to you when you are convinced of atheism, you'll start to do things that are condemned in this book. Don't even tell me about it. Don't even tell me about it. You know why atheism is so popular among college-age children? Because they want to fornicate. They don't want some book telling them, hey, that's fornication, it's wicked. They want to drink. Condemns drunkenness. 
they want to covet after money. I'm going to be a big such and such when I get out of college. I'm going to have my degree and I'm going to make lots and lots of money. Love of money is the root of all evil. See? Well, then you got to get rid of the book. And you got to fight God for the rest of your life. You have to want to go to hell to end up there. And Christian, you need to think about that. Yes, you have a responsibility to witness to the lost. Yes, we are supposed to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Okay? That's there. But when you get somebody and they just absolutely just reject what you're trying to even get through to them, you might not even get a real good chance to witness to them. I've had that happen. You just say, well, the Lord, oh, yeah, yeah you know, I, I don't even, tell you, don't even, let's not even go there. Okay, or they'll change the subject or whatever else. You are not responsible for their salvation ultimately. You should speak up. Don't get me wrong. It's important for you to speak up. You're an ambassador of Jesus Christ. But you are not responsible for their salvation. God will put lots and lots and lots and lots of things in their path to make them think about salvation. Nobody innocent will ever go to hell. Never going to happen. If you're lost, I've seen lost people. They watch my videos and watch my videos. They watch every single one that comes out. And I'm going, what is the point? What is the point for you to watch my videos, for you to come here to this ministry and just watch me? And a lot of you just make fun of me and things. Why? What's the point? You know what you're doing? You're trying to find little loopholes, little things that you can say, well, he said such and such, and there was a contradiction. I can, I can, so I can reject. So you can continue in your sin. The book's got your number. You're going to go to hell. Well, I don't believe in hell. So keep fighting. Well, you have to prove things. Christians prove things all the time. All the time. So this is a video that goes two ways. If you're lost, then I pray that this thing convicts you and you start to realize, I mean, what do you think sin is going to get you? I mean, really. Going out and fornicating your brains out and everything else, you're going to find true love that way? You're not going to find true love that way. Somebody starts off fornicating and just goes in from partner to partner to partner to partner. You're never going to find true love. You're never going to find true love as a woman. Some guy that loves you, no matter what you look like. Makeup, no makeup. If you're sick, if you've vomited, he'll help clean up your vomit. If there's other things and things like that, you know, female issues and stuff, a real man will love you through that and help you with whatever problems you have. You think that you're going to find that going out to one night stand bars and things like that? You men out there that go whore hopping, be blunt. You go out there and just pick up women and pick up women and stuff. You're going to find some woman that's going to be there for you when you're sick. Some woman that's going to care for you. Let you talk about your innermost feelings, things that are upsetting you and things like that. Not going to happen. And you know it. Drunkenness. Well, I like to get drunk once in a while. Where's it going to lead you? To better health? Hey, I like to cut people's throats in business. I like to get to the top of the corporate ladder. Why? Work hard so that you can make a lot of money so you don't have to work. You're brilliant. You're brilliant. <laughs> Why don't you quit fighting God? When you feel the conviction, when you feel that there and you say, you know what? Maybe there is something real to this salvation thing. I'll tell you what you do. Pray. Say, God, I want to know the truth. And sincerely mean it. And then watch what happens in your life. Work for me. I was a false professing Christian years and years ago. On my way to becoming a big artist, getting into better and better galleries, better and better art shows. And I got to a point, I remember walking outside. It was about 3 o'clock in the morning, I think. I looked up at the stars and I just said, God... I'm sick and tired of this life. I don't want it anymore. I want to know the truth. Give me wisdom. 
I couldn't have turned to James chapter 1, verse 5. It says to do that. I couldn't have, you know, asking for God for wisdom, saying, I couldn't have turned to that thing to save my life. I didn't even believe the King James Bible at that point in time. Didn't even have one. You know? Look what God's got me to. Yeah. If you're lost, why don't you quit fighting God? Why don't you get salvation figured out? If you're saved, this uh, little challenge here, um, don't beat yourself up over people rejecting Jesus Christ. Okay? Uh, there's a reason that they're fighting. It's called uh, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Do your best to witness. Sure, absolutely. And remember, you can't fail witnessing. When it comes to handing out tracts and things like that, just get it out there. They're rejecting something, they're rejecting the Lord because their deeds are evil. Okay? And you know, and it, you get sometimes somebody that just shoots you down or whatever else. Again, they're fighting. You know, they're fighting the conviction of the Holy Spirit that's upon them. So, just want to make that video real quickly here. Uh, just something that's been on my mind a lot lately. I've been seeing this thing more and more. You know, it used to be I'd be driving and I'd have the bumper stickers and on the back and on the sides and things. I'd get people and they'd wave and smile and, and you know, like this or something. And now it's just like I get people and they're just so nervous and they're looking around and uh, it's a verse of scripture. It's a little, you know, Bible verse. You know? <laughs> you know, I remember coming up the, the road the one time and it was snowing out and, and, uh, guy was behind me and he's you know going way back and then he's like you know waiting for a passing zone and it's snowing like crazy and finally gets an area where he can pass he's in a car you know i'm in four-wheel drive and he, he's in this car and he roam out around me and the thing went sideways and he's slipping it's about broke his neck you know i mean i was scared watching the guy i can't imagine what he went through you think uh he pulled over and said you know what i need to get right with god of course not. Straightened the car back out and got back in the lane and when took off. I mean, he just about killed himself. What's he doing? He's running. Just like a lot of you lost people are right now. You're running from God. Your time's going to be up one of these days. And then you're going to find out that all the things that I preach here on this channel in terms of eternity, they're all true. You're going to find it out the hard way. You better get saved.